A Golden Chain of Divine Aphorisms by Johann Gerhard Translated by Ralph Winterton Chapter 7 Wherein are contained theological aphorisms concerning election and reprobation. Predestination is a certain peculiar act of the divine providence about the salvation of men. By it the reasonable creature is directed to an end which exceedeth its proportion, to wit, unto eternal life. In which sense predestination is made part of the divine providence. The doctrine of predestination is not to be involved or concealed in the cloud of silence, seeing that it is in scripture evolved or revealed by the Holy Ghost. But we must handle it soberly, reverently, and prudently. Let us speak not what, and as much as the curiosity of man's heart desireth, but what, and as much as the Holy Ghost teacheth. Predestination or election is called the unrolling, registering, or writing of our names into the book of life. But yet, this book of life serveth not to put God in mind of some, lest he forget them, but it signifies the predestination of those which shall inherit everlasting life. As therefore, none of those that are elected do perish, so of those that have their names written in the book of life, none are ever blotted out. But they are properly, and according to the phrase of scripture, said to be written in the book of life, who cleave unto Christ by faith and perseverance. Election, as well as creation, is the immediate action of one and the only true God alone, which belongeth also to the Son of God, not only as he is one with the Father and the Holy Ghost, but also as he is appointed to be the mediator, in which sense we are said to be elected not only by Christ, but also in Christ. And it is an action not eminent, but imminent. And it is also ordinate, whence it is, that the elect are said to be ordained to eternal life. The reason and manner of this order is made manifest unto us by the gospel, by which the mystery of our salvation, which was kept secret since the world began, is now made manifest. In which sense we are said to be elected according to the purpose and foreknowledge of God. That purpose is the counsel and good pleasure of God concerning the salvation of men by faith on Christ. God's election is merely of his grace, not according to any merits of works foreseen. The only cause and foundation of this grace is Christ. In him, the beloved, we are freely beloved. But inasmuch as Christ profits no man without faith, therefore the mention of Christ in this business doth include the action of faith, in which sense we are said to be elected not only in Christ, but also through faith. Again, because the end of faith, I do not mean such faith as is temporary and endureth but for a time, but that which persevereth and continueth unto the end, is eternal life. Therefore, when we name faith, we understand perseverance also. The end of election in respect of ourselves is sanctification in the kingdom of grace, and glorification in the kingdom of glory. The end of our election in respect of God is the glory of God, and the clear manifestation of his mercy. God willeth and earnestly willeth the life of a sinner, but he willeth also his conversion by the word and the Holy Spirit. If the sinner refuseth and rejecteth the word, and resisteth the Holy Spirit, and so is not converted, then God willeth the death of a sinner, and that most justly. These things are not repugnant, the one to the other, but do manifest unto us the wonderful temper of God's mercy and justice. What some produce concerning the hidden will of God, contrary to his will revealed in his word, that inasmuch as is not revealed, is not without just cause hidden from the godly. Neither doth God in word only testify unto us that he earnestly desireth the salvation of all men, but also in deed and in truth. The first Adam was created after the image of God, whereof immortality was a part. All men were in the loins of their first father Adam. Therefore in him they may be all said to have been created after the image of God unto immortality. What Christ by his precious blood shedding purchased for us all, that the Holy Ghost in the precious treasure of the word offereth unto all. The gospel is offered unto all, and in the gospel the benefits of Christ, 
and in them the grace of God, and in that eternal life. And thus the love of the Father, the satisfaction of the Son, and the calling of the Holy Ghost are always joined together. That calling in itself and of itself in respect of God which calleth is universal, for it is his good will and pleasure that the gospel should be preached unto all. But it is made particular by the fault of men, who by their detestable contempt of the word rob themselves and their posterity of so great a treasure. In which sense such are said to judge themselves unworthy of everlasting life. If we descend into particulars, we confess that there are many things yet obscure, which hereafter shall be made manifest unto all in the light of glory. Neither is the grace of God which calleth all to be depressed, nor the power of free will accepting grace to be extolled. Let the salvation of men be acknowledged to be the mere gift of God's grace, but let the damnation of men be attributed merely to their own fault. The judgments of God we must always acknowledge to be just, although they are not always manifest unto us. God's grace preventeth and prepareth us before we can be able. It worketh in us that we may be able, and it worketh with us, whensoever by his gift we are enabled to do anything that is good. As God in time doth justify men and save them, so also from all eternity he decreed to justify them and save them. The action of God in time is, as it were, a glass wherein we may behold his decree concerning that action made from all eternity. The reason whereof is the immutability of his divine will. Therefore, as God saveth all those and only those that with perseverance believe on Christ in time, so also he purposed from all eternity to save all those and only those that with perseverance unto the end shall believe on Christ, that is, he elected them unto eternal life. Therefore, let us with sobriety begin the doctrine and meditation of predestination from the wounds of Christ. In the light of the word, there shineth unto us the true light which is Christ, and in Christ the love of God electing us unto salvation. Without the path and light of the word, whatsoever we can think or imagine in our hearts, whatsoever we can speak or utter with our lips, is but darkness and error. But on the other side, if we follow the light of the word, we shall neither decline to the right hand of presumptuous temerity, nor to the left hand of carnal security.